Um, Hi, Alan. So by our, by our current rules, the person who opens the proceedings when there is no elected officers is the first person named in the order, which we just found out, which based on me talking means that it was me, I guess. So I was the first person on the council president's order. So um, I'll open the proceedings. This is not me taking over uh, de facto. It's we actually, we have to vote on that. And that's what this meeting is. Um, this is an organizational meeting for the city council rules select committee. Um, we're convening it 533. And um, we'll start with the roll call, please, Laura. Sure. Uh, Member Baskin. Here. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Foster. Here. And Laura, could you also turn on captioning? Sorry. Oh, sure. Thank Thanks. you. Um, Councillor Maori. Here. And Member Simon. Here. Thank you all for this, and I and I realized that it was, it was it was. And thank you, Laura, because I realized it's a bit of an arduous task trying to get us all to convene at the particular this time of year. It's a little tricky. Um, we can. I don't think there's anyone. I don't see anyone, at least on my phone here. Maybe you can help me, Laura. Is there anyone here for public comment? There's one unidentified um, participant that just has zero one oh one oh six. Oh, that's you. That's, okay. <laughs> then that's no. me. That's my iPad. So yeah, I'm on here twice. So, okay. So no public comment. So now we just come to the process of an election of officers and we have a chair and a vice chair. Um, the nominations, we open up nominations uh, and then um, by decree, then everyone um, actually... <laughs> Then we close the nominations and we vote on the on the offices. So we can start with um, the chair, and and you can nominate yourself. By the way, nominations. Actually, first of all, I'm sorry. Uh, we have to open nominations, so that would require a vote. Is there? For, I'd ask for someone to call for uh, the open opening of nominations, please. Move to open nominations. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Uh, uh, I couldn't hear who. I, I think Karen did we'll the second. Al. Yeah, give it, give it to Karen. I'll second Karen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, any discussion on opening nominations? Probably not. Laura, please call the roll. Member Baskin. Yes. Member Dwight. Yes. Member Foster, I mean, Councillor Foster. <laughs> yes. Um, Councillor Maori. Yes. And um, Member Simon. Yes. Nominations, please. Anyone? Someone's got to do this. So you could pull a short straw here. Um, is there a nomination for someone to serve as chair? Don't make me start doing this. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have, we, we actually don't have a rule that indicate, that addresses the issue of no one doing it. Well, <laughs> and it's solicitor's choice. Yeah, okay. So any, uh, uh, Council Maori, did you have your hand up? Member Simon oh, is. I, I, no. think I, was, I think Member no. Simon had his up first. Yeah, I just had a okay. question. Member Simon? Yeah, Bill, was this was this committee your idea? Yes. Okay, I nominate, <laughs> yes, it was. I nominate you to be chair then. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, are there other nominations? I nominate Councillor Mayor to be chair. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, accept a motion to close nominations. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. Member Simon made the motion. Me uh, Member Baskin seconded. So 
Um, first nominee is uh, Bill Dwight. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. No, actually, Laura, I, I guess it'd probably make more sense for you to call it by the roll. Okay. So it would be a yay or a nay, a yay or a nay for, okay. for Councilor Dwight. Uh, Councilor Dwight, I have a quick question. Sure. When we did when we did this for council, those who were nominated had a chance to say something, and I guess I would love to hear from either of you about your um, uh, capacity to take on chairing the committee. Fair enough, uh, absolutely. And Council Maori, um, I'm going to take advantage of my position right now and say, go for it. <laughs> Do it. Go for. Uh... Discussing. Hanson Foster would like, yeah, just uh, just you know, sharing about what what um, reasons you would like to serve as chair. Oh, well, you know, I haven't thought of it until this moment, so I will. It'll be really interesting to see what comes out. Uh, well, you know, I will say, I'm very excited about this particular our, our particular task, and I feel I have I do have some energy for it. I, I'm. I don't feel quite strongly. I, I feel like we, we have a really great group of um, of members here, and so I, I know I'll leave happy no matter what. But um, yeah, I'll just say that that I, you know, that that I I am excited for our, our work here. Um, and for me, actually, I'll I'll ditto that. And in in my impetus for actually calling for this. Um, is because something that we all experience, at least those of us in the council, that a number of problems presented themselves as we changed the way we uh, now conduct meetings, which will not be permanent, but will have changed in some ways going forward. And there are also some, we still, in the process of our rule changes, still have some vestigial tales, if you will, of items that really don't make don't necessarily promote one principally transparency can you freeze for everybody I think you did opportunity for us to have this conversation and so that said I mean I I, I, I certainly do not need to be the presiding officer that's but there you go that's my wimpy speech. Um, any questions of the nominees? Does anyone have any questions? Council, what? Okay, so we'll do this. Uh, yes, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you if you prefer to Council be chair. Oh, I was I was asking you, um, Council Dwight, if, if that's no. your preference. Okay, I <laughs> tried to read you. Sorry. You said no. I don't. I don't have the preference. Yeah, I'm not being coy. I don't, I would. I would accept it if it's get, if 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 I end up being elected, that's fine. I I you know I, this is not the thing I've been staying up nights hoping that I could actually do. <laughs> but the fact is, is that that you know I'm I I'm as ambivalent as you could possibly be. I would be gladly accept it and take it on if if I get elected. If not. I will not be hurt and I will be fine. So, okay. so, uh, Laura, if you call the roll and then, so me being the first nominee, it's a yay or a nay. How's that? That would probably be the best way to do this. Laura. Question. I've seen it done where you call the roll and each person states their preference for the candidate. And yeah. I wasn't sure if that applies in better. this situation. Where there are two I don't, that's nominees, that rather than yay or nay, would that be appropriate? Okay. That's. Uh, I would defer to the solicitor there. Yeah. Let's Alan. See. Okay. So that will be done. That's a good idea. Yes. So I, I, I uh, believe that that's the appropriate you... way to do it. Okay. Very good. Thank good. you, Laura. All right. So, okay. I can go ahead then. Okay. Uh, Member yeah. Baskin. Councillor Mayori. Okay. Okay. Um, Councillor Dwight. Councillor Dwight. Okay. Um, Councillor Foster. Councillor Mayori. Um, Councillor Mayori. 
Councilor Mayori. Okay, and Member Simon. Now go Councilor Mayori. By, by almost acclamation that Councilor Mayor is now the chair and you now preside over the over the proceedings, Councilor Mayor. Ah, starting right now. Afraid so. That's okay. I, I, one of the reasons I, I always had some ambivalence, but one thing that I'm excited about is actually um, the process of learning how to chair because I would like to be able to take more leadership. And um, I, don't, I don't play that role in any of our committees thus far. Uh, I do have a point of, uh, I guess, clarification for you, Councillor Dwight. On these committees generally, is there, do we seek balance in terms of vice chair and chair with um, community members versus councillors or is everyone looked at in the same? Yeah. Uh, everyone is to be considered on the same level. So okay. if, if you have a vice chair, it, it, no, the councils, the councillors don't take precedence because it's a combined committee right. for that reason. So. So I guess we'll be looking for a, a motion to nominate for vice chair, candidates for vice chair. Move opening nominations for vice chair. Second. The second, Councillor Dwight? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Should I proceed to roll call, Councillor Mayori? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Member Simon. Yes. Councillor Foster. <laughs> um, I would recommend uh, Member Simon for Vice Chair. Can I second my own nomination? <laughs> sure. Can I second my own nomination. Okay. Any other? Move to close <laughs> nominations. Okay. Roll call on closing nominations. Um, Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Member Simon. Yes. Okay, I guess we need a roll call on that one. Right. On, on, uh, are the a move to, to vote on the nomination. When there's okay. only one nomination, we still have to vote. It, okay. yeah, I, right. again, rather than saying yay or nay or members, well, I guess it, would, <laughs> I guess it wouldn't matter which um, in this case. Okay, Member Baskin. Yes, slash Member Simon. Okay, um, Councilor Dwight. Member Simon. Okay, Councillor Foster. Yes, slash Member Simon. <laughs> Councillor Mayori. Yes, uh, Member Simon. And Member Simon. Yes, Member Me. <laughs> okay. I don't actually have our agenda in front of us. Besides that. Um, I can share it. But the, Thank you. I can Thank screen share it. The, yeah, the next um, item is actually overview of public records, open meeting and conflict of interest law. Great. Presentation by attorney Seawald. What? If I may, Madam Chair. Yes, proceed. Thank you. Uh, uh, a presentation is, is an overstatement. Uh, this uh, Ezekiel and Al, these are. This is really for your benefit. The others here have lived through this uh, in their various capacities on the council and on council committees. This is a governmental body, so this is a governmental. You're sitting as a governmental body, and there are certain rules that apply 
when you are acting in a governmental capacity uh, that that might not necessarily apply when you're on a nonprofit board or, or some, some other kind of committee. And the three general things I wanna to talk to you about are the open meeting law, the public records law, and the conflict of interest law. The first two, uh, open meeting and public records, these are just basic open government requirements. Um, you know, we in Northampton really do try to go above and beyond what's minimally required um, in the, uh, for instance, in the open meeting law by publishing as many documents along with the agenda item on the agenda so that people can read these documents ahead of time and, and know what is exactly at issue. Um, and, but, you know, the basic requirements are for the open meeting law that you only convene and you only deliberate um, in a noticed open meeting. And that might seem obvious, but um, if, if Councillor Foster were to contact you, Councillor Simon, and talk to you about something that, that is relevant to this committee, that's not an open meeting law violation because it's not a quorum, okay? Because you have not have a quorum discussing a matter that is within the jurisdiction of this committee. Uh, once member Simon talks to member Baskin, you have now violated the open meeting law if you're now recounting the same topic that you that began with Council Foster. So my, uh, uh, to the extent possible, uh, do all your talking in these meetings and try to avoid uh, outside uh, uh, deliberations. And I know that, you know, people talk and that's fine. But once you get to that third member, you have violated the open meeting law. So be very, very careful about that. Um, um, when, when you get an email uh, from Laura, uh, do not reply all, because as soon as you reply all, you have violated the open meeting law because you have, and, and so um, reply to Laura. Laura will be the conduit through which uh, information is, is distributed, generally speaking. I think that the chair may also, but, uh, but Laura will be the principal distribution point for information and information should go through Laura. The kinds of things that you will get and that don't constitute open meeting law violations when you receive are things like scheduling of meetings, uh, receipt of documents that are to be discussed at the meeting so that you have it ahead of time, you can circulate documents, but you just can't discuss the documents. You can't offer your opinion on them. You can't solicit anybody else's opinion on them. That happens at the open meeting so that it's recorded. People who want to attend can watch and know what you're talking about. Um, if you're going to sponsor a, some sort of motion and you would like others to join with you, limited to one other, because as soon as you come in with three sponsors to a motion, uh, you have by definition violated the open meeting law. So just be careful of that. Uh, when I came on board, it was not that unusual for five city councilors to, to sponsor a, a measure. And I went, no, nah, it doesn't sound right. Uh, you must have communicated outside the meeting about this. So be careful about that. And if you, and if you have any questions about any of this, I'm here for, to answer the question. So you should feel free to email me or contact me any other way that you feel um, uh, is appropriate. Um, I really wanna to move to the public records law. Um, anything that you, any document you make or receive in your role on this committee is presumed to be a public record and it must be preserved. So your emails to each other are all public records, and you may know this from being on the other side, maybe making public records requests, but emails and text, uh, all of those things uh, that we do so thoughtlessly all day, every day, um, are public records and will be disclosed to the, uh, anyone who requests them. And what this means is, think about what you're putting in an email, okay? 
If you don't want to see it above the fold in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, as though anything actually appears in the Daily Hampshire Gazette these days, um, if you don't want to see it in the newspaper, if you don't want to see it online, don't put it in an email <laughs> because it, they are public. Uh, it also means that if a public records request is made, someone might be scouring through your emails looking for, uh, looking for public records. Now, generally speaking, neither I nor the state will actually do that. But there are situations where you could have um, uh, litigation over your records. And if that happens, and I'm not thinking that this is very likely, but if that happens, you could have lawyers scouring through your, your email. So if you're using your general email for a committee business, just understand that they're public and people have the right to them. And you know, I, I think that a lot of uh, a lot of folks who sit on a lot of boards and committees or sit for long term, either get a Northampton email, which I don't believe that's possible for the citizen members of this board at this point, but or just create a new email and just use that. You know, you know, Ezekiel on rules at you know gmail.com and and. Just use that email, and then you never have to worry about mixing your emails. Okay? You don't have to do that, but I think that for some people, it's a lot more comfortable to do it that way. Um, Can you ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm taking some notes, for example, on what you're saying, and I imagine I'll take some notes on the remainder of the meeting. Are my personal notes subject to this as well? Not generally. Not if they're notes you're taking to formulate policy positions within the jurisdiction of this committee. There are exceptions. And as I said, they're presumed to be public records. There are exceptions and that you just picked out one of them. Um, so uh, there are exceptions. So I would not worry about taking personal notes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I just wanna review and make sure I understand so far. So communication with other members and counselors about things that don't pertain to the purview of this committee, even if I talk to, like say I were to talk to Councillor Foster and Councillor Dwight about something that was totally unrelated to the scope of this committee, is that fine? That's or is fine. that, okay, great. No, so it's only things that are about- quorum, A quorum of this committee speaking about matters that come before this committee. Great. Excellent. Now, don't forget, of course, if you speak to Councillor Foster and Councillor Dwight about something completely unrelated, they're still public records. And if somebody, sorry about that. And if somebody, um, so if you make that request of Councillor. Foster and Council Dwight, and somebody requests the, the record, they're going to get them from the other side. They're mm -hmm. not public records when you communicate with your counselor. They're public records when your counselor receives them. Got it. Okay. So uh, they are public records, but you can talk to your to counselors about whatever you want to talk about, as many counselors as you want to talk about, as long as it's not a matter that's within the jurisdiction of this committee and something that's going to come before this committee. Excellent. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. The last thing I want to just touch on, and again, if you have any specific questions, don't hesitate to contact me. And I don't really think there are going to be conflict of interests here. Um, I don't know that any, uh, any of either of you or any of you will have financial interests in what's going on in the rules committee. Um, but just let, let me just state the, the, the obvious. Um, no quid pro quo for doing your work here. No matter how small the, the payment is or the thing of value that's given to you in the quid pro quo, um, you know, uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you manage to you know, maintain, or if you get the committee to extend public comment to five minutes a person, I'll give you a hundred bucks. That's a violation. Uh, even if it's five bucks or 10 bucks, that's a violation, okay? Um, Things that are not linked to specific issues before this this committee um, um, are prohibitive 
uh, from being received by the committee members if they're worth more than $50, okay? So if somebody says to you, you know, I don't really care about the rules, but I just wanna thank you for doing this. I wanna take you to a Red Sox game and we're gonna take a limousine there and it's all you can eat and all the beer you can drink. That's a violation, okay? Because, you know, it's, you're getting that because you were on the committee, not necessarily because you were voting on any particular issue any particular way. So it's not a quid pro quo, but it is a violation. So nothing of value over $50 can be received because of your service on this committee. Um, uh, obviously you cannot deal with anything uh, on this committee uh, in which you or your immediate family member has a direct financial interest or indirect financial interest. So if for, and I'm not even going to be able to come up with a, with, with a, a hypothetical here, but if there, if, if somebody in your family, you or somebody in your family or your employer has a financial interest in some way and how the rules are handled, uh, you cannot participate in that matter. Okay. So that's the actual conflict when you, your immediate family member or your employer uh, have a financial interest or any interest in this, then you need to step, step away from that issue. Okay? Um, if there is no financial interest, but your best friend in the world has an interest and it's not financial to you or any, anyone in your family, but somebody knowing the relationship would think that maybe this person is going to get different treatment from you that either positive or negative than somebody you don't know that could be a, a conflict and the way to cure that is to disclose it oh by the way john smith happened, who's who came to public comment and argued for five minutes of public comment for each person he's my next door neighbor and my my longest my oldest and dearest friend you know, that's the thing. If you, sunshine is the best disinfectant for non-financial conflicts, um, the appearance of conflict, okay? So um, anytime, and, and let me just say that, as I said, I don't expect a lot of conflicts to arise here, but if, if you ever have an inkling that maybe I should think about this, please contact me. Because if you have, if it, if you're thinking about whether you should do something or not, you probably shouldn't, or at very least, you should get some advice. And you can get that advice from me, or you can get that advice from the State Ethics Commission, and they will give you the advice on one condition that you haven't already done what you're wondering whether is proper or not. Because if you've already acted on the matter that you're concerned about a conflict. Um, they're gonna send you to the enforcement division and you do not wanna be in the enforcement division. They don't fool around, they're really serious. I don't know if you see from time to time stories in the paper where you know a fire chief gets fined 2,500 bucks or you know, you know, people do get hit pretty hard on these things. So think carefully about whether there's any possible interest here of you, either you, your spouse, your brothers and sisters, your mother and father, your in-laws, your, uh, uh, your employer. Um, so uh, if any of those things pop into your mind, please contact me because conflicts can arise in the most unexpected ways. And uh, so uh, please don't hesitate. I, my job here is to keep you out of trouble. And we appreciate your service on this committee. And we don't want the legacy of your service on this committee to be uh, um, you know, uh, a dance with the, uh, with the State Ethics Commission. You don't want to do that. So just be careful, be thoughtful. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to reach out, acwall.northamptonma.gov. And I will respond. I respond as quickly as possible to conflict of interest inquiries because they're very important. That's Wait, a very important part give, of my job. Did you just give us your email address? I think I missed that. A seawall that's s-e oh you probably see it on the screen there uh s-e-e-w-a-l-d at north northampton ma.gov thank you my cell number 413-237-4710 if it's really important text me or call me if it's really time uh constrained call me or text me thank you 
that's all I have. If there Any are other questions, yeah. Questions. So, Solicitor Seawald, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll return uh, back to this committee at a point in the future to discuss um, parameters around um, council meetings. We had discussed that at another point. Mm -hmm. that, okay. I'll be here anytime you want me to be here. Okay. So I'll let just, you know when that, when that subject know. matter comes up and we'd love we'll, to have we'll, you back. We'll, I will let you guys do your work without me um, unless I hear from you, uh, Chair, and, and, uh, or Laura. Uh, contact me if you want me to be here. I will. I'll, I'll make myself available unless there's some unavoidable conflict. But I don't see any at this point. On I don't know when you're meeting, so I shouldn't really say that. But uh, but if it's Monday nights, um, you know, so far so good. Unless legislative matters has me. So thank you. Thank you very much. But no problem. To discussing it further. Thank you, solicitor. Let's see. So we have the discuss the meeting schedule on the next. So we open the, the the open up the discussion about the meeting schedule. Do we need to vote on that, Laura? Oh I, no, no, not to just, no, just not to the item. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I have a question for you, Laura. From from doing the difficult work of getting us all here, as there a suggestion and knowing the other the other kind of whole of all the other committees is, is do you have a suggestion for us? You know, I'm trying to remember um, because I pulled both the ranked choice voting and you guys, I think it was ranked choice voting that the best days were Monday and Tuesday. Um, yeah, I don't remember if there were days um, off limit for this committee. I don't recall any, um, of course, Thursdays for the council. Um, and some Mondays being problematic with subcommittee meetings. Um, as well as city services and legislative matters depending on the time, correct? Right, and community resources. And community resources. Which is well, if I, I was looking at the uh, city council website today and all the committees have all of their meetings scheduled for the two year term it looks like. Mm -hmm. they're all, and they're all listed there, right? So yes. we can easily check against whatever we want to do against what's already scheduled. Right. And I remember, I think it was GL maybe told me when she asked me to be on the committee that this has, we have to do our work before the end of this, the term of this council. But we have a hard stop as well. Yes. Yeah, I guess my question really is how often do we want to meet um, to achieve that goal? Yeah, Councilor Dwight. Um, that actually, I mean, I, I don't know what the best way to proceed is, but I think that, um, you know, first of all, we should all get a copy of the rules, obviously. If you don't have a copy, and I think Laura can share that with you, and there's also a recent amendment from 2019. Um, but you know, there's some stuff that, that we don't have to worry about. But the thing is, is we should probably go through all the rules and see if we can individually identify what problems that we see there are, and then from there we'd probably be able to get a better sense of how much time we need to devote to this. Um, you know, what are the big topics? We know some of the big topics right off the bat, but um, the but there, there, there are some surprises in there too. There, it's it's an, a very elaborate text. <laughs> Councilor O'Donnell uh, was very thorough, but at the same time, there are some things that um, we would probably identify given what we've experienced in the last year and three quarters, basically, that um, might need adjustment. Also, it's also a lot of this depends on what the attorney general's office ends up deciding on. I mean, right now there's been an extension on these remote meetings for a year, but um, w which means the new council will be still be allowed to participate this way. But then as it moves back into um, 
a requirement by the state to meet in, in, in chambers, then the rules have to apply to that. So all of this has to be considered going forward and what's the best way to, to attack that. Yeah, I don't know yet, but I think, I think, so the amount of frequency, amount of time we devote to this is hard to determine before we, we, we can at least identify essentially what the work that we have ahead of us. Councilor Foster. May I make a proposal? that we um, consider monthly meetings and that at our next meeting, we do as Councillor Dwight suggested of um, bringing forth topics that we would like this committee to delve into for further consideration. And that might, you know, it might be as we near the end of the council term or as we move into fall, we find we need to meet more frequently. Councillor Simon, did you have, I mean, Member Simon, did you have yeah, um, I actually wanted to suggest that at this meeting, like right now, that the three sitting council members actually state what they think the issues are, because I've read the rules and I have some thoughts myself, but I would like to read them again, understanding what current counselors think we need to look at. That would help me to actually to prepare for the next meeting. Uh, member Baskin. I also did write in my personal paper notes a list of some of the things I would be interested in exploring. Um, so I would be happy to share that. And that, I think that sort of is our next agenda item. But I'm, I'm happy to share that in addition to the others. I'm just going to chime in and say, I think I think Councillor Foster's plan is, is good. I, I, I had a thought about since we're meeting less frequent, frequently in council, that perhaps this was a, a time to uh, to get some steam and, and meet more often. But I also see that as, as potentially problematic since it is summer and, and we have a lot more uh, time away. But I did have the kind of opposing thought of kind of getting getting the ball rolling faster while while other uh, council work is a little bit uh, slower. But when I said that, I should probably look at my schedule. <laughs> Uh, to see, you know, to see what what's actually available. So a month from now would be, let's see, so July, so it's June, right, so end of July. And, and I guess I would ask the members, you know, does this Monday time in general work for you? Yes. Okay. Yes, though a little, a little bit later in time would be, would be better, but uh, Monday's fine. But Monday's fine. Uh, we just have to check with the other, you know, the other committees that we that meet. We'd have to make sure, obviously. So um, we could do six. How does I would like to hear if it, what people thought if, if six would be better. Six, six oh, is that fine. I mean, the, I mean, yeah, as you noted that we have legislative matters. Right. I also happen to be on, on the committee for um, ranked choice voting as well. So I don't know what that meeting is yet. But um, but Mondays at six would be perfectly fine with me, uh, provided there's no standing conflict. And as Al pointed out, that's easy enough to determine, at least with uh, the standing committees now. So um, and, it, and it is, to, to, I was going to say something to Al's request about um, what, you know, I mean, part of, I mean, given the fact that I pushed for this, I think that, that there were, it, it wasn't just on a whim just for the opportunity to sit on another committee, God bless me, but um, Al, I don't know if you noticed there, one of the things that always stuck out to me that's always been a problem since I've been a counselor is this second reading mm -hmm. thing, which is um, unique to Northampton, no other community. It, it comes out of Robert's Rules of Order and it was years and years and years ago, I don't know, back in the dark ages, someone in Northampton misinterpreted a reading as a vote and mm -hmm. it's not. Um, and I actually think that has become problematic. It, it's always been problematic, although what it does for counselors is it allows them uh, another two weeks to consider an issue but the fact is, is that we already have, by Robert's Rules of Order, the means to postpone or uh, postpone a vote. And 
So, I mean, there, there are we're already, already in our rules, so it's allowed. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. The other thing is, of course, uh, the, the issue of public comment, I'm sure, is on most of our minds. It's, uh, since we started participating remotely, uh, it allowed for a uh, an awful lot of public comment, not all of it from the community. And, but that's fine. What it was though, it, we had meetings running late into the night and it, it actually directly impacted our ability to function and make decisions. And um, the fact is, is that when we start meeting in public again, I mean, meeting in, in you know, human form, the, um, that's not as likely. I mean, we won't have people coming from Lever Turner's Falls or, or Midway, Massachusetts to participate in our meetings unless, unless we have to meet the AG's accommodations relative to um, public comment being held remotely. That's a possibility, although, and we do have the means to do that. So that's part of the conversation. So it's about, it, we're not in the state of Massachusetts, you're not required to have public comment. But if you do have public comment, there are definitely requirements. And I don't see anyone in Northampton saying no public comment because that's not how we do stuff here. But um, there is a question of what would be fair and just, and that's for us to consider. And at the same time, allow us um, the proper and appropriate time to deliberate and do and give proper attention to all the items that we need to discuss. So. Um, uh, those are the two. Those are the two big points, but there are other ones about committee assignments. There's also, actually, I would point out the Youth Commission, which is uh, an anachronism. It's it's actually one of the more dynamic committees that we have. Although, oddly enough, it's called the Mayor's Youth Commission. Although they, the Youth Commission, spends most of its time conferring with us, and uh, maybe we could possibly consider changing that to essentially just Northampton's Youth Commission and not make. And the mayor doesn't have to be the appointing agent and, and so on and so forth. That's worth discussing because I, I don't want to lose uh, what I consider to be an integral and, and dynamic committee uh, for this community and, and actually has deep. Councilor Dwight, I can't, I think you're frozen. We'll wait, we'll wait, give it a minute, see if. It's okay. No, no, I'm just, just yeah. repeat no. that last part. Yeah. About my screed? <laughs> I just say, no, I want to keep the youth commission, but I, wa yeah, I right. want them to be uh, essentially considered like all the other committees so that they are treated with the same gravitas that all the committees in the, in the, the standing committees have currently. Any other thoughts on that? Councilor Foster. I definitely would want time to think about, to like reread the rules in this context and, and think about, um, but off the top of my head, um, similar to Councilor Dwight, I would like to revisit second readings. Um, public comment, but in the context of, um, I've actually been pretty inspired by how remote participation has allowed has opened the door for more public comment, as well as um, I think can open the door for who participates in public service. And I, I think that that's something I wanna look at very, very carefully of, of um, how participation looks both for members of the body as well as, as public, but also similar to Councilor Dwight, um, uh, exploring how we do that in a way that counselors are um, making decisions that impact the city at a reasonable hour of the day, um, because I, I, that, that's a reasonable, um, important thing. Um, the other thing I'd like to look at is uh, meeting times and locations. Um, way back when, there was a consideration of, of can we make council more accessible, and, and Zoom is a resounding yes, we can. Um, but uh, when, if we are meeting in person again as, as the main way to meet. Um, I wonder if um, considering where we meet may be uh, one, one piece of that, um, as well as committee assignments, um, the, maybe the scope of committee work and what, how many assignments counselors have um, are things I'd like to be looking at. 
Member Baskin. Yeah, I am also interested in exploring a lot of the things that Councilor Dwight and Councilor Foster have both brought up, um, including certainly remote participation and public comment. Um, also interested in other modes of integrating public participation beyond comment um, and ways that we can be in dialogue, that the council and the public can be in dialogue more effectively. Um, I'm interested in the structure of voting and the use of roll calls um, because they take a long time. Um, and I wonder how necessary it is to vote in that manner. Um, I'm curious about the clause about decorum and how decorum is defined um, and civility and respect. Um, I am really curious about suspending the rules and how often the rules are suspended as a potentially a sign of things that are broken about the rules. Um, I think the second readings is a big one there. Um, if a rule is being suspended half the time, is it a functional rule? Um, and I'm also really curious about the end times of meetings and how to make sure that meetings end at a reasonable hour and that vital business is not being conducted at 1 a.m. Um, yeah. So those are some of the things I'm interested in. Councilor Dwight. Just uh, the point of the roll call vote. Actually, Ezekiel, that was required from all votes, starting with remote participation. Um, that was based on the AG directive. That'll change when we go back to public meeting. But there are there is, um, for instance, on orders of taking financial orders, those require a roll call vote. So each you get the actual yay or nay from the, the member. That may be under MGL and we'll talk, Mass General Law, sorry. Um, and we can talk with that about the solicitor, but I agree with you, absolutely. And you're right, the suspension of rules. In fact, the only rules we suspend as far as I know are the suspension to take a second reading. So as, as you'll note, so all good points. Thank you. Member Simon. Uh, Councilor Dwight, thank you for that clarification because I was wondering why we weren't just doing a, a voice vote when we clearly could, but you've explained why we couldn't, so thank you for that. Um, so um, in addition to the two topics that you've mentioned, which I already had on my list, um, and the public comment slash length of meeting, for me is a real concern as a former elected official from another place, but now as a resident here who has watched some of these meetings, um, you just can't be doing your business at 11, 12 o'clock at night because you, you may think that you're making yourself accessible by allowing 50 or 100 people to talk, but what you've effectively done is made your actual business meeting inaccessible to virtually everybody in town when you're, when you're conducting your business at that time. So there has to be, I think, some sort of balance that allows for you to properly hear from the public, but you're also getting your business done in an efficient manner at a time that makes you accessible to people who care to, care to be interested. Um, I went through the rules and I was like, wow, there's a lot of rules here. It, it seems excessively formal to me for what is a, not a very large community. And, you know, maybe that's the particular culture that has existed here, but it seems in in smaller settings that we could you could probably operate in a way that doesn't have as many strict rules but but could still get the business done i'm a little concerned about the size of the agenda that seems to be very long and wondering if there are ways to move some of that so that your meetings can be compressed and you can get your business done a little bit more quickly um, and then just some other sort of cleanup you know, why is this here? What's this mean? Which people they certainly have the answers for because you've been living the rules for a while. But um, yeah, I look forward to, you know, going through it and hopefully we'll, we'll come up with some sort of uh, uh, consensus answer here about any modifications. I, I'll chime in as well. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm glad that we, we're doing this because I see that, we, um, that we're kind of all on the same page of the, the areas that need to be explored. Uh, I, I've talked with, um, you know, we've talked about um, accessibility and remote, uh, remote meetings and, and how that maybe, you know, help some access public service uh, more as well. So I, as Council Foster is, I'm interested in that. I'm certainly interested in, in talking about uh, public comment and the length of meetings. 
I was home visiting my father who was select, uh, select uh, person in Harvard Mass. And he had, he was talking about a rule he had passed where you, you didn't have a hard cutoff time, but you could not deliberate. You, you had to take, um, you had, you had a, the last agenda item um, you couldn't, you couldn't go on to deliver, to deliberate another agenda item after 12, I believe it was. And so, so you didn't have to stop it at, at 12, but, but you didn't, uh, it might've been 11, but you didn't, you, you didn't, uh, <clears throat> you couldn't pick up another agenda item without a vote actually. And of course, unfortunately that brought up the other rule he had made, which was to eliminate paying elect election workers. And my mother was an election worker. So after that, the dinner got a little tense. But I, I did glam onto that rule, um, and just, just kind of food for thought. And yeah, and I've also interested as Council Foster has mentioned and kind of looking at the scope of the committees, making sure we're really using our, our resources well and effectively. I know we're gonna have to, to, to do this in the, in the paradigm of council rules, but I, 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 I'd be uh, very interested in exploring that, especially with members of the public to see what they feel is you know, you know, kind of useful in terms of how the councilors are spending their time. Yeah, anyone, any other thoughts on, on that? Solicitor Seawald. Not overstepping my bounds, I'd like to, to let the committee know what one of my pet peeves is. Please. Um, Having the chair of committees read every document into the record, that mm -hmm. has to end, okay? There is no legal reason for that to happen, particularly when these documents are all available ahead of time. These documents are online. These documents are, if in person, they're up on a screen in the hall. If you're, you know, they're screen shared, there's no reason to read documents. And it's a mind numbing exercise. And I don't really think people are taking in a lot of good information as you know, GL and I have to compliment her in her ability to read out loud. Maybe it's a skill she's developed as council president, but um, it's, it's, a, it, it's become a ridiculous endeavor. And I would, I would put that on the list uh, to eliminate reading documents into the record. Summarize them, sure, but not read them line by line, particularly when she's reading ordinances that are red line. Uh, it's just torture. So. Perhaps she was an auctioneer before this, but she is very good at it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any more thoughts on, uh, on you know, what shares on kind of rules and identifying our priority topics? No. Member Baskin. I agree with what Councilor Se what Solicitor Sewell just said, but I also, I think the sort of, I'm also curious about the concept of deferring to Robert's rules for things that aren't covered in the rules. I guess I would be interested in exploring that as a basis. And I'm curious if some of these things come from there. I'm also curious about addressing people by their role, like Councilor this and Councilor that and the, to remove that that creates, if that's intentional. Um, I'm curious about that. I couldn't find that in the rules, which made me wonder if it was from Robert's rules potentially, um, or if it was just a, a practice that had been taken up, but I'm curious about that. Okay, any other, yeah, Solicitor Seafold. I think that's a vestige of a more formal time uh, you know, I think councils used to wear jackets and ties to council meetings also and call each other by their titles. So, uh, but I understand that. Okay, so it sounds like we have a, a general meeting time. Um, is there any more discussion on the, on the topic of uh, priorities? I, I think we'll have... Oh, yep, Councilor Dwight. Uh, when, 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 when did we decide the next meeting was? Well, I, I thought we were going to explore the idea of uh, Mondays at six, barring any conflicts. So the next, correct? about a month, so that monthly, would be, so the next month would be July. Yeah, yeah I'm looking, let me look at the calendar. Just, 
Laura, let's see, that would be. Uh, July 5th is the uh, Monday, 4th of July holiday. Is that the next? Or were we, were we um, trying to go a month before the next meeting or we are going to have another meeting and then go a month from that? What's, what, what's, uh, uh, does anyone have thoughts on that? I, I'd like to suggest we have something sooner than that, if possible. Yeah. And actually, there is a conflict with the a month out would be the July 26th is the proposed um, date for the ranked choice voting organizational meeting at 530. We also have legislative matters on the 12th. Um, it looks like city services on the 5th and community resources on the 19th assuming those committees happen. I wonder if Mondays are not actually the best day. <laughs> yeah, it won't be for July, for sure. Yikes. Seeming that way. Hmm. The first and fourth Mondays are okay. The second and third are the possible conflicts with uh, community resources and legislative matters. It's possible it, the second Monday is okay if legislative matters only goes for an hour. So it varies right. a little bit, but. But first and fourth, since city services is at four, six o'clock shouldn't conflict with that. Is there a problem with Tuesdays? Mm. Let's see. Is how this? Yeah, let's 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 chime in about Tuesdays. They work for me generally. About others? Yeah. Generally. Generally. Hmm. Well, there's an idea. Hmm. So how about Tuesdays at six? Um. Let's look back at the calendar. I guess. Can we try the 13th, maybe? That works for me. Anyone? Is, is, is anyone that does not work for? I, I think it will work fine. Just a caveat. I, I have a little bit of a later work engagement. I think I'll be back. But if I'm late, that's why. So six o'clock Tuesday the thirteenth. That's what we're thinking. But Councillor Foster, in general, does that work for you? In general, it does. This okay, is a it's just unique that one time. Day. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Well, that that's good. We'll have less, you know, less traffic on Tuesday. For, you know, figuratively so speaking. We're confirmed for Tuesday the thirteenth at six p.m. Yeah. Two. Mm -hmm. Yes, July thirteenth, six p.m. Okay. So is there any other thoughts before we, uh, yes. I'm the sorry. only thought I, I have is, um, I know that on the 13th, we're gonna sort of uh, further outline the topics we wanna cover, but I wanna, I wonder if we wanna go ahead and put one of these topics, maybe the oh. second reading or something on the agenda for discussion, just so we can kind of move forward a little bit. That was one we all identified or, or another one that was kind of, one that we all identified and, and we may be able to, to go ahead and move forward on at least one topic. Can I just ask a clarifying question here? Because I was actually just going to ask you, what's the procedure for actually creating uh, and posting agendas for uh, the subcommittees? Uh, Councillor Dwight. It's, it's through the chair. The chair establishes and determines its final say on the agenda. You can submit items of request to the chair and it's at their discretion, but I mean, they, 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 I've never heard of a chair kicking anything off an agenda, but right. that it's basically through the chair, so. And then how long before the meeting date is, is the posting required? It has to be 48 hours of a business day, not over the weekend, or a holiday. All right, yeah. But I would add the earlier you can get it in probably the better. We generally on council, I try to, for, for example, get things in on Friday for a Tuesday uh, noon deadline, just, just to give some leeway. Thank you. So we, we identified um, some areas here tonight. I mean, we wanna take on more than one and just, uh, so we don't have to have them submitted. Can we decide that now that they'll be on the agenda? Is that, is that, is that not how we would do that? Well, if if I may, I think yeah. because these are me these are meaty topics. Most of the ones, the the big ones that we've identified, and then there'll be smaller ones as well. 
but um, I think I've got it. We've got four major ones that we all we all seem to agree on. Um, I think we dedicate each meeting, one meeting per issue and extend it if it need, it's needed. But that way we can be prepared for the discussion and for the issue. And then, and then once we get the meaty ones out of the way, then I think then we can move on to just maybe even apportioning out among the members here, uh, the remaining items and have them have each person, you know, take a segment and analyze it, and make their recommendations to the committee at large. And then we can discuss those if they identify anything. That way we could many hands, you know, thing. <laughs> but if we, if we talk, say on the next one about devote that conversation to public comment or, or, or second reading along those lines or public participation and so on. I think uh, those are meaty enough to warrant an entire meeting at the least. Yeah, so I just want to also point out, and I know that the counselors know this, but there is also the, the opportunity to you know, uh, peel off into um, into subcommittees. Subcommittee. subcommittee, and obviously in this committee you couldn't have a subcommittee of more than two. But um, and so there's a possibility that you might decide a topic is meaty enough that you want two of the members to do some investigation to maybe see what other communities are doing or how they handle a particular topic, and then come back and report back to the to the body uh, in full. Uh, I just want to, the reason I'm bringing this up is that I just want you to be uh, sensitive to the fact that subcommittees are also governmental bodies and they're also, you know, subject to the open meeting law and the public records law and everything else I talked to you about before. But uh, that is also a useful tool in getting into subcommittees. And uh, yeah, in, 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 however, in a subcommittee, you can't confer with your other subcommittee member outside of the public. That's meeting, right. So, so you can't, because, because there that's a violation of our law. Like, yeah, it's very formal, Ezekiel. It's all very formal. That is the sense that I've got. <laughs> so we have we have a topic that we're going to start with next at our meeting. Or so we, we're, do we all agree that we'll take on one? Does that sound uh, okay with everyone? Well, I think why don't we just why don't we start with the with the four items that have been mentioned, put them on the agenda. I, we're not going to resolve everything for each item at, at one meeting, I don't imagine. But it, let's get the discussion started, and we may find we spend the entire meeting on one topic, and everything else gets pushed, or we may find we spend a little time on each and decide to carry on the conversation. Uh, I think. I think it'd be good to get some something listed and get going. And then, you know, as we proceed, there'll be other items that our reading of the rules will cause us to bring up and we can deal with those then. But uh, if we have some sense of major topics right now, let's get going. Uh, Member Baskin. I agree. I think it makes more sense given the particularities of open meeting law, it makes more sense to put all four items on the agenda so we're permitted to discuss them, even if we decide to postpone some to a future meeting. And I'd also love to keep this discuss, the sort of identify topics item, because I think it's broad enough to allow us to identify other topics that might come up. So we're permitted to discuss those, at least in identifying them for future meetings. I don't want us to be constrained out of not being able to talk about things because they're not on the agenda because that's always kind of frustrating. Uh, Council Dwight. Well, well, to that point, I mean, that's the open meeting law issue because when you post an agenda, the public has the right to know and what to anticipate what you will be discussing. So the idea is that um, if you make it too broad, and there's a particular issue that they're concerned with, then it doesn't get discussed in that meeting. Or if it's if it it, it suddenly shows up in a meeting they weren't anticipating, then we we defeated the purpose of an open meeting and agenda posting. So the idea is to essentially provide a menu for the public, so the public knows 
exactly what we're talking about. So if they want to participate or observe, that they they know what they're in for, as opposed to a smorgasbord. That's all. So I, I, that would be, I mean, these are the formalities, but there's 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 a method to that madness on some level, and um, I don't want to. I, I think the more precise we are in the agenda, and that we keep and devote the energy and time to those agenda items. And look, if we if we exhaust the topic, then we adjourn the meeting. There's nothing horrible about that either. And if we feel that there's something else we need to do beyond that, then we can call for it and add it as new business at the end of the agenda, uh, which will be included at the next agenda. So for instance, you decide that uh, free ice cream cones should be given out. That comes up as an order of new business. You mentioned that. You, we discuss it and put it on. Uh, we ask the chair to include it on the agenda for the following meeting. And that way the public is able to keep a pace. So I'm hearing perhaps the four. So Councilor Dwight, you're saying realistically don't think we'll get to the four main topics. So maybe we should pair down. Is that what you're like? Uh, yeah, I just think it's right? ambitious. Yeah. I think it's ambitious, but um, you know, I, I personally, I, I I, I like to at least, you know, devote our energies in one meeting at least, exhausting all the potential issues that might come, might arise, might be challenging for each one of those first four items. And then beyond that, I, you know, then we could start to become a little more, deal with the miscellany. But I, I these are important enough, including a German time and things like that. Um, all, all those things will will be given due deliberation, but I think it's, if we're, I like the idea of starting off big, going for the, the, the meteor topics, the low hanging fruit, if you will, and address those first. That also help us lubricate ourselves as we proceed and figure out how we can function as a committee and how best we can go forward. Member Simon. Just my... Yeah, I, I do want to suggest that it, it may be ambitious to think that uh, we're going to settle a big issue on one night um, because I, I can see I can see that in the process of discussion, we may want to think about it some more and there's value to sitting on something for a while and coming back to it. And we also may find we want more information that in the process of discussion, someone may, may think of, oh, we should look at this or oh, we should look at that. You know, which we'll gather for the next time. And um, I tend, while I would like to solve everything in one meeting, I, with some of these, particularly if they're bigger, I just think they may and maybe should drag on for a little while until we can get to the point where we've either discussed it enough or gathered enough information or, or a combination of both to feel comfortable with bringing something up for a vote. Any more thoughts on uh, on the agenda for next time? Okay, I think that's I think we've hit the end of our agenda for today. Then, um, Laura, can we decide we're putting on the agenda the one issue of um, second reading, or are we doing all four issues? I just wasn't quite clear. I I, I would defer to the chair. Okay. As, as we should. So uh, the chair will probably work it out with you, Laura, as what Thanks. the next agenda will be. Okay. And the next thing I would do is uh, move to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Simon. Yes.